And good evening, everybody. This is Vinny Maletti here with Maletti Law, the strongest name in law. Um, first and foremost, before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. We're getting pretty close to having uh, at least 100 subscribers. Um, and once we do, we get to do some really cool stuff with, you know, we get to do some really cool stuff with the branding on the website. So, you know, please certainly click subscribe to the channel. Always delivering fresh new content, exciting content every day. Go to the website, www.maledilaw.com. That is www.maledilaw.com. Sign up to the newsletter, always be in the know. And, you know, be up to speed with all the latest developments that's going to be out going on. As you all know, those of you who do know me, who have been following and who are part of the team, I mean, we got constantly updates all the time. My website is slowly becoming a comic book at this point <laughs> with uh, how much artwork we actually have going up there, which is hysterical because we're a law firm. But apparently, we seem to be extremely into entertainment and comics, apparently. And, well, I guess because we kind of live our lives as comic characters here. So, all right, well, let's get down to it. So the video today is actually pretty quickly. Um, I recently had a bunch of comments on this. Uh, a bunch of requests came in, so I just figured a video might be helpful. Uh, so obviously it's the year is 2020, uh, 2021 people are, you know, trying to diversify how they make money. People are trying to do new creative things in business. You're seeing businesses take on new, um, new projects, new developments. So for instance, you'll have maybe like, um, a manufacturer that will start manufacturing something new in light of the new restrictions that are going on. You know, or maybe you'll see, even like you'll see fulfillment centers begin delivering and fulfilling new products, whatever the case is, as Amazon continues to grow, as eBay continues to grow. So this question actually came up because a couple of people have been asking, uh, the biggest concern. So, you know, recently I posted a video commentary on the FDA not too long ago. I absolutely utterly despise the FDA. Um, I, I, I despise anything having to do with excessive government overreach and the EPA is like, I mean, I'm sorry, the FDA is right up there with the EPA. And any of you who know me, the two most hated industry, the two most hated government agencies that I could point to off the top of my head are the Environmental, the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, and also the California Air Resources Board, otherwise known as CARB. Keep in mind, as a general rule, anything named after a carbohydrate is evil. Anything having to do with carbohydrates is evil. Not only do they make you fat and out of shape, not only do they spike your insulin levels, but they also make you unhealthy with over you over regulation and destroying your business, making sure you can't sell anything. I digress. So back to the point of this video. So the point of this video is that um, essentially, you know, people are starting to get involved in new areas of business and one of our buddies was getting involved in um, packaging products. And so the question just becomes packaging, labeling products. The question becomes, you know, what rules and regulations are out there for packaging and labeling food products, supplements, right? So just a quick, I'm going to just touch on um, five brief questions because um, it's constantly, uh, th this will really run the framework for everybody. Um, number one, who is the agency that regulates it? Um, as you heard from my rant, it is the FDA. Uh, the FDA regulates uh, not only the contents of food, substances of food, what's approved, what's not approved, what's adulterated, what's mislabeled, whatever. They also regulate the um, packaging and labeling of it. I just said mislabeled, but they just, I meant to say adulterated and, and whatever. But the point is they, yeah, they regulate the packaging and labeling of it. Uh, I believe it's like 21 CFR 101 or something like that, or I think 101 or that series of 100 is where you'll find it in the CFR, the Code of Federal, the Code of Federal Regulations. So the FDA does regulate um, food packaging, food labeling, um, they, you know, even processing, the FDA regulates processing. If you're, if you are an established um, packaging company, the FDA likely has already regulated, you know, you've likely already registered with them. Um, if you consistently package and handle um, food products or supplement products, um, generally there's some required, there's a, there are some mandatory labeling requirements there. I think there are 12 overall, but you could probably couch that 12 into these five mandatory labeling elements. Um, you could couch it into um, the name of the food, the quantity of the contents, you know, and obviously the name of the contents, the nutrition facts, recommended daily values, is number three, um, an ingredient statement where you just, you declare all the ingredients as well as any kind of allergens you want to point out. 
And the fifth one is the name and address responsible for both the packaging and the manufacturer. Everything should be on there. Any product you go in your kitchen, you find out, you'll always find the same ideas, right? You'll always find um, the name of the food. You'll always find the quantity of, of the contents, how many are in there, or what's the weight, something like that. You'll find the nutrition facts, obviously always the FDA nutrition facts. You'll find the ingredient statements and disclosures. And then you'll find the name and addresses of the responsible people who've either manufactured it or labeled it or, you know, people down the food chain, right? No pun intended. So generally speaking, the FDA really wants you to, um, the, the FDA really wants full disclosure on it. Um, if you have foodstuffs in there, they got to be listed in the order of, uh, the dominancy of the pack of the food altogether. If it's say like, you know, like an ingredients list, right? The ones that is the ones that are on first will be the ones that are the most abundant in there. Then the ones that toward the end of the ingredient list will be the ones that are in there the least amount. There are certain foods that are exempt from labeling requirements. Um, generally speaking, it's going to be raw fruits, vegetables, fish, um, certain dietary supplements. Not obviously not all of them. Obviously not all of them. Just certain very few dietary supplements. Certain egg cartons. And then also um, certain infant food and formulas for children, I think, under the age of three. So there are certain uh, foods that are just generally categorically exempt um, just overall from it. There are also some other exemptions like we've run into specific situations, exemptions where, you know, if you're putting something that's already labeled and packaged inside something else, if you're just uh, packaging it up and giving it away, or if you give it away a very small amount as a gift or as a promotional issue, something like that, shouldn't, doesn't need to be packaged. So I don't know, let's, for instance, you got a bag of M&Ms and you just take a couple of M&Ms, you put them in a little baggie and you put them out. You don't need to uh, repackage those. You don't need to like go through the whole labeling thing. If you give them as a gift, it's a promotional product, you know, let's say having a party, whatever. Um, the third portion is also... There's sort of a de minimis exemption. Um, it's not really so much an ex as an exemption, but if you don't produce, if, you, if you're not in the business and earning X amount every year, it's a very small amount. If you're in the business, you obviously earn more than this, otherwise you wouldn't be in the business very long. But this was really intended to protect those who, you know, maybe just temporarily because of a promotional issue, package something that happened to be in some kind of um, food manufacturing business or some kind of restaurant business or something. There's a $50,000 de minimis um, minimum. So if, if you're not, if you're in, if, if you're assumed to be in retail and you're not selling more than $50,000 over a two year period, um, so that's, I guess, it's $25,000 a year. Again, it's obscenely small, but I, I think this is just more as a fail-safe designed to protect people that happen to be, like, in the industry, like in the restaurant industry, let's say something, or maybe like a food carting industry that um, don't necessarily fall into these, but they just need some kind of caveat, you know, to kind of help them out. So those are a couple of, um, those are a couple of the key issues that, you know, a couple of things I just want to discuss really momentarily, just in this video real quickly, because we've been getting those questions coming in. Um, I've been assisting here and there on those. And now in terms of the business aspect of it, one of the questions was, is there some way you could, one of the questions was, how can I arrange overall my brand in order to, um, kind of like automatically meet these requirements, right? So, I mean, look, if you're in the business of manufacturing food, supplements and food products, then I obviously would recommend you use a professional, right? Maybe, you, I mean, you don't necessarily need to use a lawyer, um, but you could certainly use someone in the industry. Any, any manufacturer will likely know their minimum requirements, right? Like unless they're brand new and novice, which is not generally the case. But generally speaking, as a brand, if this is something that at some point in time you want to expose yourself to and, you want to, and you're one of those do-it-yourselfers, and you know you don't want any guidance whatever the case is you don't want to spend the money you rather spend the money on the product then i keep a couple keep like six kind of elements in mind um when you're coming up with your packages so these six elements as long as you keep these in the back of your head it will be a lot easier that when the time comes and you have to make the changes maybe a little more professional about it um that it'll be a lot easier transition uh, so one of the first items you gotta keep call attention to is your packaging, the product must call attention to itself generally. So if you are making candy apples, right? Like the product packaging, you want it to draw attention to the fact that it's a candied apple, to the fact that, you know, um, highlight a big name by, you know, cl or clear packaging, cellophane packaging by the caramel. Like you want that, like it's easy. It's a much easier transition when the buyer sees, um, when the buyer is attracted to something about your product and sees 
what they're actually buying without even actually having to read anything, right? Because a picture should say a thousand words, a package should say a hundred thousand words, you know? So that's, that's one thing, right? The second item is, you know, you want to, you want to make your brand and your purpose very clear right on your package design, right? So right on your packaging. So like, so, you know, I don't know, let's use animal for example, right? So, I mean, right away off the design of the package, you see what you see here in animal, you see intensity, you know, you see, um, non for you see dull colors, you know, like dull flat coloring you see, um, cause it's, it's conveying that impression of intensity purposes, strength purposes, you know, power driving, you know? So that's something like that. So in, in this particular brand, no matter like where they, what they label on any kind of product, like the purpose and intention is going to be very clear right off the bat. Um, you want to draw, you always want to draw some kind of attention to emotions of it. This also plays into your packaging because, um, you know, depending on what, like the, the look and feel you're giving people on this particular product, on this particular packaging, the look and feel you're giving people, it's not easy to make disclosures to not turn them away from it. Um, you know, you always want to come off as having, say, like this, this iconic kind of image, this iconic packaging, like this is like the solo, like you will see an Apple and always think Apple products, right? So the packaging has to reflect that same thing. So that's also another item, you know, keep in mind when you're designing package, when you're designing, when you're designing packages, uh, effective packages, call out the benefits of the product, call out the benefits of the, of the brand. Um, not saying you're making any specific statements, but again, why, you know, tell people about your product, the purpose of the product, why it's great. Let it be let it be on the package design. Let it let let the image on that package design tell a thousand words, right? Tell a hundred thousand words. And finally, you always want to design the package that intended to hit its target audience. So you want to sell to a consumer. If you're selling foodstuffs, you want to sell to a consumer. You want to draw their taste buds. But at the same time, you want to educate them in true disclosure fashion. So you always want to design to meet your target audience, to meet all those elements. And, you know, as long as you keep those six elements in the back yet, so just to go run, run it down one more time, the six elements were... One, the packaging, the packaging needs to call attention to itself. Two, the packaging must be, per, the purpose of the brand must be clear. Three, the packaging must elicit some kind of emotion or reaction. Four, the packaging must, in it, you must strive to be iconic, you must strive to be like a trailblazer. Um, five, uh, your package should always capture uh, people's attention toward its benefits, whether those benefits, whether they have to read them out or whether they see it just from the packaging itself. And six, it should packaging should with every single package you have, it should always um, re, you should always intend to reach out to your target audience just based on the design itself. That your package never has to say nothing, but based on the design itself, it reaches to the target audience. By keeping these six elements in mind, it will be easy to transition into other things that you know that um, that you will, like. It will kind of like it will build itself into the transition, and it will build itself into meeting an easier transition into focusing a little bit more on the regulatory compliance as opposed to just the business requirements. You know, so there's a there's a harmony here. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that there's some kind of harmony here. There's some kind of symphony between them. So, um, it's it's an artwork. So, definitely, it's an art form. It's a it's a it's a work. It's a form of art, uh, package designing and branding. And you'll obviously you'll do fantastic at them. Um, and as long as you stick to those, you know, six, as long as you stick to those six principles, it will be an easy transition when time is required to make your product more compliant, to be able to make your product be in compliant with the uh, prevailing rules under the FDA. And as long as you're in the FDA, the big five items that they're always looking for are the identity of the food, name and identity of the food, um, the quantity and the amount of the contents inside. Think about weight, think about pieces, the nutritional facts, the disclosure statement on the ingredients and um the name and addresses for the responsible parties so that was a lot so i hope this was helpful um i'm again this is i'm literally at this point responding to the amount of queries that we have coming in and the amount of guidance that we're giving out i figured it would be helpful to everybody to have this sort of um in some kind of little comprehensive video it's longer than i wanted i thought i'd be able to get out but as usual i always try to get out in less than 10 minutes it never seems to happen but whatever enjoy the content have fun um as always if you need us we're here leave comments in the below send those emails go to the website send me a letter find me on facebook find me on instagram find me on yelp find me on skype find me on twitter find me on whatsapp i don't give a shit i'm everywhere so as always yours and laws love and lifts 
This is Mwadi Law, and have a great evening.